My name is Linda Lawson and I've been working in Madagascar and researching women for about three years now. I'm particularly interested in women miners like these around me. Madagascar has some of the world's most beautiful sapphires. It has lots of different gemstones. Its sapphires are world renowned and all of these women around me are sapphire miners. Here in the southwest of Madagascar, women have come from all over to work in the sapphire mines. There are thousands of women like this working in sapphire mines. It's a hard job. They've been driven here often by poverty, but they're very grateful for the income that it provides. Some of these women have come from the very south of Madagascar. Their job has become obsolete down there. They can't grow crops anymore, so they've moved up here to try their hands at sapphire. One thing I've been impressed with over the three years I've been working with these women is their tremendous resilience, their optimism, and their courage. And it's motivated me to keep working with them. In this region, the sapphire-bearing gravel is mostly found in ancient underground rivers. Miners go underground to bring up sacks of gravel which is then transported to the river to wash. Women do not usually mine underground. They tend to work on the surface and they work incredibly hard. In the open pit mining, women occasionally supervise operations. And of course, they manage the daily life of their family who often live in and around the mining area. In some areas, ornamental stones such as jasper and agate can be easily gathered from the surface. We've encouraged the women to use this gem material as a great starting point for their lapidary and jewellery making activity. Another way that the women mine is called sissy buka, as you can see here. This is a kind of uh, in the grass, literally in Malagasy it means in the grass mining. And it goes to about a metre depth. And it's especially good after the rains or on a new deposit. One woman told me that she found a sapphire as blue as the sky during Sisibuka. You'll find most of the women miners down here by the river, either standing in the river or on the riverbed, sieving the gravel for the precious stones. This is best done in the early morning when the light is bright enough to pick out the stones. They wash the stones and the gravel over and over again, hoping to locate those precious sapphires. It's hard, heavy work. The frame is made of wood and gets waterlogged. It's hard work, it's heavy work for my friend. But women are proud to do it. Women find that there's an opportunity to generate some income for really valuable activities, such as buying land, buying food, buying a house perhaps, even buying zebu, the most potent symbol of wealth in Madagascar. The women sell or barter their stones to a middleman who then sells on to foreign buyers. The smaller stones are bought and sold by a very special group of women, the ladies in hats. You will see them in their booths with their shoulder bags and trays and they often measure quantity with an aspirin tube. Both women miners and traders are disadvantaged by a lack of tools and equipment. They don't have the gemological knowledge which is needed to sort and grade their stones. As a consequence, they are disadvantaged when negotiating sales with the more experienced male buyers who dominate the industry. In recent years, we have conducted training in basic gemology for the women. They learn to use a simple guide to recognize the type of stone and its quality. They were also given a simple field gemology toolkit. This included tweezers, a loop, a torch, and they were even taught to make their own dichroscope. On returning to the region, we were pleased to see that the lessons had been taken to heart and the knowledge well used and appreciated. Many of the women were confident enough after our training to be able to effectively pass that knowledge on to their neighbours. 
thus creating a community of learning to support their growing trade. Now that they are able to both identify and grade their stones, they can add value to their sales. Confidence plays a huge part in the negotiation of gem deals. They are now far better equipped to give a firm price on their gemstones. <laughs> Most of the precious stones are transported out of the region and sold in the capital. The more valuable gems are taken to trading hubs such as Sri Lanka and Thailand. The majority of coloured gemstones on the market today will have passed through such centres. Adding value to gemstones within the mining regions is a challenge as this requires skills, equipment and usually electricity. This is not a problem for established workshops in the major cities but it is hard to come by in rural areas close to the mines. Traditionally, there have been very few opportunities for women to add value in the gemstone trade. But here, in Madagascar, in the southwest, a breakthrough is occurring. Women have been provided with a dedicated space in which to learn lapidary skills and the art of beautiful jewellery making. Okay. Women in southwest Madagascar are now beginning to play a more active role in adding value to their stones. They have skills and talent, and with expert guidance, their work would provide an ongoing source of revenue to women and families of the region. <laughs>